Port Phillip Bay in Victoria is a world-class fishing destination, most famous for its annual snapper run from October through to March. However, it offers great fishing for other species throughout the year. Nearly half of the bay is less than eight metres deep. Prime fishing territory for squid, whiting, flathead and various other fish, which we'll be targeting today with Mark Ainsworth from the Victorian Fisheries Authority. Mark, like me, has grown up fishing the bay, particularly along the Mornington Peninsula. And we can both attest to the bay's ongoing improvement. Geez, how good are these boat ramps these days? It's good, isn't it? When I came, started coming in 50 years ago, we used to have to book the tractor in. <laughs> They're coming beach launches at Whitescliff. So it was, um, yeah, this is just fantastic, mate. Well, they did a big overhaul in 2016 of the Rye Ramp, yeah. and it's just another one around the bay that's free. And we made them free a few years ago, and everyone's loving it. Makes it easier. All right, let's get out there, eh? It's a cracking day for it, mate. Let's push off. This morning, Mark and I are headed out to some of our childhood hotspots to fish for a bay favourite. Bit of squidding first up on a beautiful morning on the bay. And black squid jigs, you like them, Mark? I do. A few years ago, a friend introduced me and I, I put them on first up every time now. Love them. It's amazing how the fish shows get locked in on certain colours, but the most important thing when you're squid fishing is get to some good grounds, um, cast out. I do a countdown. We're in 20 feet of water here now, so I count about 20 seconds. You want it within about five feet of the bottom. Give it a few flicks, and the most important thing is to drift around, work around until you find a pot of squid. Give it a few flicks to attract them, and uh, it's the easiest thing to do, isn't it, mate? It is drifting. A little light breeze helps, just pushes the boat across the weeds. And uh, Robbie, I think um... you on already. <laughs> and the other thing too is when someone hooks up, get your lure down behind it. It is a really good art to learn, and it's easy. It's probably one of the first things you should do besides flathead fishing: learn how to catch a squid. You're not going to believe this. this is pretty rare in the shallows. But you've got yourself an arrow squid, also known as a flying squid. And these guys are aggro. Um, I'm going to just grab him behind the back of the neck. And he'll try to attack me. See that? See how he's grabbed on the mini? See his beak's trying to get me? Now, the reason they're called an arrow squid is just because of that little tail there. They don't have the full um, wing like a southern calamari. But he's trying to bite me. His um, tentacles have actually got a little rasp in it. I'll leave a rash on your hand. He tried to get me then. Look at that. He'll try and turn his beak towards me. That's like a parrot's beak. As you know, you've probably had them in the bucket and they'll attack the other fish. They have, they, I've had them in the, in my, with my calamari and they've, they've done some damage to my calamari, which isn't great yeah. for the family dinner table. Very aggressive. Fortunately, we're targeting southern calamari. These are non-aggressive squid, which are much easier to deal with. Squid jigs don't have barbs on them, so you've got to keep pressure on the squid. You can net them. The problem with netting them is they ink everywhere. Uh, you don't know which way they're facing, so I do like to grab them. I've actually been grabbing these for 50 odd years now, so keep tension on them, leave about a rod length of line out, and keep them moving forward. You can't go wrong, and when the time's right, just drag them past the boat like that. Put your rod down, grab them behind the back of the net, and that's a southern. Mark? I'll tell you, a really sustainable species in the bay. Yeah. They live for uh, no more than 12 months. Wow. And they can breed up to three times a year. Yeah. So these things are eating machines and they are a foundation part of the bay ecosystem. Lots of things love eating them. But, you know, you take your bag limit of 10 a day and don't feel bad about it. Enjoy them with family and friends. Oh. And uh, half of that might be bait for a gummy later. Oh yeah, absolutely. We've, we've, got, we've got the candles for, um, for whiting. We've got the head for gummies. If we get to go gummy fishing and, and the body for the family back home. Yeah. That's a win. Alongside flathead fishing, it's probably the number one fun thing to do, I reckon. And it's great for kids because it's easy. It's, you don't need fancy gear. Yeah. You can do it from a pier, you can do it from a boat. So as an introductory species on the doorstep of Melbourne, yeah. mate, squid are a winner. Squid breed prolifically and grow quickly, reaching full size in less than a year, flourishing in the long seagrass and kelp in the bay. I've got some real weight here. Yeah. Uh, and the jet propulsion, like yeah. they're, they're, they're an amazing creature. They can move small distances delicately with the side wings, yeah. and yet they can put the boosters on. Yeah. And uh, that's how you get that pulling, is when they're using that jet propulsion system. This is a proper Southern oh, Calamari, that, guys. That is a good one. Oh. oh, yes. 
<laughs> Look at that mark. And he's got a follower down there, but that's a proper tube length. That's like a 35, 40 tube length. Put him up here on the board, Rob. I'll tell you a bit about him. Yeah, cool. Big eyes, high order predator. Yep. These big, longer things are called the candles. Yep. And that's what, it, that's what it reaches out, grab its prey. That goes there, yep. It's got a brain that's donut shaped and the esophagus goes through the middle of the brain. And it's got three hearts. So whatever he swallows has got to go through his head. Through his and brain. And three hearts, yeah, yeah. And three hearts to, uh, to pump a copper-based blood system. And cephalopod is a Greek word, means a foot head. Related to the octopus, but that one is gonna go in the bin and that will taste amazing. If you're fishing or boating on the Mornington Peninsula, you should try to include a visit to the fur seals on the South Channel Lighthouse. You'll remember the smell, that's for sure. Anyway, today we're here for the fishing. We've come out looking for whiting. Key depth is between about two and six metres, or thereabouts, but it's all about the habitat, right? It is, mate. These whiting like a bit of reef, a bit of weed. Mm -hmm. They don't want all sand, you know, get the little sand flooded, we don't want them. Yeah. So we found a couple of patches, we got two whiting in the bag, yeah. so we've anchored, we're going to set up yeah. fresh squid that we just caught, and hopefully we can turn them on and we can build a bag. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, you just can't mistake the fight of a whiting, nice King George, hey. They just buckle down and go, here oh, we go. Ripper, swing him in. Yep. Beauty. Oh, well done. That circle hook's done its job, hasn't it? Yeah, I'm gonna catch you there in the corner. Now, what I like about it is you don't have to sit there ready to hook. Just let them take it. In the old long shank system, you have to be ready. So I love that. That is a class table fish, mate. And when you've found one... Normally more. <laughs> he smiles as it all. So. And that little piece of candle from the fresh squid that we caught earlier, can't get fresher, better bait than that, can you? Yeah, what a fantastic fish. Very soft bite is the whiting, so they just suck that bait in. They haven't got a lot of teeth. What's he doing? Oh, he's got me in the reef almost. A dirty fight, so nibble tip rods are always good. And just almost can't mistake the fight, even though this guy, see, he's probably bury me in the weed. He's not a bad one. There you go, that's what's down there. Got a bit of salad with our whiting. I'll just take the salad off. And there is a beautiful King George whiting under all that. Oh, such a tasty fish, such a hard fighting fish. Iconic here on the bay. One of the keys to whiting fishing is burley. Once you've got a few fish near the boat, you can keep them. Old pilchards, any old bait, jam it in, mush it up a bit, get the oil exuding, and then we'll drop that to the bottom. That might be 10 or 15 feet ahead of where our baits are. Those whiting will come up and they'll sit there, they'll get excited, and then we can catch them one at a time, two at a time. So burly on the bottom, old pilchards, old bait. It's a good tip. If you make the effort, you'll find that burly will definitely increase your chances of catching whiting and other fish. Yep, Robbie. That feels like a reasonable one. Unmistakable fight, isn't it? A bit like a snapper, but like a machine gun brrr, when they first hit. And on light, on light tackle, yeah. they are a lot of oh, fun. Oh, he's a nice one too. That's a good one. Woo. Yeah, beautiful. Oh, hey, classic catch. That was a nice catch, mate. Have you got to be close to 40 centimetres? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the 30s? Yeah. That circle hook's done its job again. Sure has. Can you whack him in the well? Yep. So, Rob, those fish we've caught this morning, those whiting, they're probably not Victorian. Really? Yeah. Crow eaters. <laughs> well, close to it. So what we know about whiting is that they, at the adults, migrate somewhere over near South Australia or the western part of Victoria they spawn. Yeah. So lots of the big fish head over there. Most of the fish we're catching here are only a couple of years old. Yeah. But when they spawn over there, the westward winds yeah. blow the, the larvae and they end up entering our bays and inlets, turning into those. The more of those westerly winds we get at certain times of year, the more of those larvae make it to our bays and inlets, and the better the whiting fishing will be for the years that follow. That's cool, mate. It is pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. We're fishing Port Phillip Bay for whiting, and as usual, the fish-based burley is attracting more than the target species. 
flatty. It's not a whiting, but still a very tasty fish. Let's see if I can land him on the <laughs> table, Rob. Everybody's are. caught one, right? Yeah, if you haven't, if you fish the bay, you've probably caught one of these. Yeah. This is a sand flathead. Great eating, and probably only bettered in terms of size by the yank flathead. Yeah. So the bay's got rock flathead, yank flathead, and these sandies. Yeah. These don't get much bigger than about 40 centimetres. The yank flathead get much bigger, several kilos. Uh, but that's a keeper. I reckon we'll put him in the net amongst a few whiting. Yeah, absolutely. For a sand flathead, he's not a bad size. And how do you tell the difference between these and the yank flathead? Because uh, you need to know. You need to know, well, if you come over here, yeah. these are percular, which are the two little spikes there. They're nasty spikes that you've got to be careful of on a flathead. Yep. On a sand flathead, the outside one is noticeably longer than the other one. Okay. On a yank flathead, they're the same size. Yeah, right. Hopefully I'll get to show you a yank later and I'll highlight the difference. Double hook up here. That's another sandy. What have you got, mate? I reckon I've got a whiting. I can tell the difference in the fight. Just the way they just do those fast dives. Flathead whiting. Uh, yeah, this is a whiting. I love using these nibble tips on these whitings. So much fun. Yeah. Light gear. It's yeah. hard to beat, isn't it? Yeah. And they're just in. That's mouth a, has got that. Oh, that's a that's a very respectable. That's a nice sandy. Oh, and a nice whiting. Yeah. And you can look at that mouth. Everyone's seen a bloody mouth. But if you look at a whiting mouth there, they just go around hoovering, hoovering up. Not many teeth. Just goes along the bottom, sucking along. And that first little touch is very gentle, but when they get it, they really hammer off. There we go. Such a firm fish and so good on the plate. You just can't mess them up when you cook them, can you? Oh, well, we've got two of the finest eating fish you can get out of the boat. King George Whiting and a flathead. Oh. Hard to beat. In Port Phillip Bay, no matter what fish you target, you always have to remember that there's squid around. So, a big squid's come up and attacked one of his King George. <laughs> And you've switched onto him. I couldn't help it. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> you, you, yeah, well, you got to make, you know, pay while the sun shines because, yeah, when they're here, you've got the jig ready. I just threw on a black jig and did a bit of a Hail Mary, and literally 20 seconds later, uh, we've got a squid that's as good as any of the ones we got this morning. All right, I'm just going to give him to you on the line. Grab him behind the collar. Oh, fantastic. Wow. That's like a 45 centimetre tube right there. Oh, that boy. Squid, King George Whiting, flathead on Port Phillip Bay. I reckon it's easier now than when I was a kid, mate. Seriously. Really? Yeah, the, the whiting in particular. They just, you know, you can come out and get a nice bag. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's really good. It's a credit to you guys managing it, mate. Well, we've removed the last of the netters left the fishery last year. Oh, really? And uh, now there's more whiting, calamari, snapper, flathead yeah. for recreationalists to catch. So commercial net free in the bay? Commercial net free in the bay. That's fantastic. So come and make the most of it, because yeah. uh, squid, they're on offer as good as that one. Oh, mate, it's And they're great. following whiting. I mean, what a combo. <laughs> it's fantastic. You can find out more about all the wonderful work the Victorian Fisheries Authority are doing at vfa.vic.gov.au. Got another one on, Rob. Oh, beautiful. There he is. Oh, fantastic. How about that, mate? You got one there? Hey, that's a bag of whiting. Let me get the hook out of this one. Half a dozen beautiful King George whiting, flathead, squid. The bay's fishing great, mate. It is fishing great. The commercial net fishing finished up last year, so now the bay is free of commercial net fishing. Yeah. Right. And there's plenty of whiting, king, uh, whiting, flathead, yeah. squid, snapper. Oh, mate. The bay's in great shape and people can come and get a great feed like that. Oh, happy days. Got to be happy with that. It's just fantastic, mate. Mark and I moved to deeper water and upsized our tackle. And the range of species continued. I'm on and uh, I've got a bit of colour, Rob. I think it's a, a little gummy or maybe a little schooly. Here we go. It's a shark of some sort. It's a shark. That's a good sign. It is a good sign. What do we got? Oh, that's little a little cute guy. Let's have a look at the... OK, it's a little gummy. Yeah. So in here, uh, more crushing plates yeah. rather than sharp teeth. I wouldn't be doing that if it was a school shark. Yeah. So we'll get that hook out and send him on his way. But that's a really good sign. Our barrel is working. Yeah. They've taken that salmon fillet. Yeah. And uh, we just need Mama. We do. They're a great fish. So hopefully we can catch Mama. All right. Beautiful little Good shark. Good luck. Go and get your parents. Tell them dinner's on. Mm -hmm. 
I'm fishing Port Phillip Bay with Mark Ainsworth from the Victorian Fisheries Authority. And we've been pretty lucky so far. Great session on the whiting and the squid earlier, mate. It's been, it's been good, but I've got another surprise for you. You have? I have. I've had a text message from a mate, Steve. He's been scallop diving and he's going to bring a few over. Keen on a raw scallop? Absolutely. He's been in today. It's a bit yeah, fresh. Yeah, he's just been in now. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the bay is healthy and this is just another part of the seafood basket. I'm not going to say no, mate. All right, we'll see how you go with it. The return of scallops to the bay is a good news story, born through effort and proper fisheries management. Port Phillip Bay was once completely overdredged for its scallops. Commercial scalloping greatly affected the natural ecosystem with native vegetation and flora almost completely destroyed. This also greatly reduced pressure snapper numbers. But thanks to the efforts of the VFA and local pioneers like Rex Hunt, commercial scallop dredging is no more. And scallops are once again back and thriving. Coming down in Victoria, I mean, King George Whiting, calamari, maybe a gummy later in the trip, and scallops. And scallops, mate. My goodness. It's a pretty good, it's a pretty good deal. They sit in the sand like that. Not oh, that way. The curved shell is in the sand, so it's flat with the sand, and it's just this little silhouette that you'll see as a diver. Yes. Ready to have a taste? Yeah, yeah absolutely. I love them cooked, but Mark's just got this one ready. He eats them raw. I love them raw. Just like that. Fresh seafood, can't beat it. That is awesome. <laughs> While we've been eating scallops, our burley has been quietly doing its thing, attracting fish of all types, like this seven gill shark, countless banjo sharks, and various other bottom dwellers. We've got something big on here. Um, some of my gear's got heavier sinkers down the bottom, chasing a gummy, um, snapper, and then if I do get stingrays, um, I've got the heavy gear to get them up quick. This is a lighter rod with a lighter sinker, more aimed at a snapper, but it does end up near the bottom. It's too strong to be a, a banjo shark, and it's probably not strong enough to be a big black stingray, so a skate of some sort. Here it is now. It's what's known as a Melbourne skate. Very cool critter. Look at that. Hey, you. Now, he hasn't got a spike on his tail like a stingray. His skin is uh, like a shark skin. Get him up here. Come here, buddy. Quite rough under there. A little bit more teeth than a stingray. Put him on the corner of the mouth there with the, the Gamakatsu circle hook. We'll take that out in a minute. But if you look across his back, they've got little sharp bits on their tail. Nothing like a stingray, but enough to give you a little bit of a cut. We'll get you back, fella, and go back down there and crunch up scallops and all the other cool stuff that's down there on the menu for you. The Melbourne skate. Cool creature, also known as a shark pancake, along with a few other stingrays and other flat creatures here that the sharks like to munch on. Typically, we experience four seasons in the one day on the bay, and it looks like winter has just set in. Now we're talking Port Phillip Bay, overcast, beanie, <laughs> wind, the footy on there somewhere, Mark. Down, hawks. <laughs> the water was starting to get gnarly, but the fish were still biting. Grab that net. Yeah, might, might be a good yank. I reckon you've got a good yank. For a bit right of colour. What have we got here? Yeah, yank. Not massive, but he's OK. Oh, fantastic. There we go. Hey, ripper. A lot of current running here at the moment, so they're bending the rod and drifting along. Now, do you think that's a yank? That is a yank. Blue spotted flathead. And show me why. Uh, you can, can you see those little, there's some spots on it. Oh, the little blue spots. Yeah, point them out. Yep, yep, yep. Those little spots there. I won't. I'll use that, that end. Those yep. little blue spots there. Yep. And the uh, apercula. These two little things here Let's are the see. same length. Right. And that's the other clue. But you can see those those spots that are sort of whitish. A bit. Uh, some of them they're more blue, but that's yeah. that's white. That's the big clue. So that's a small yank. Yeah, great stuff. That's about as small as you get them in the bay. Yeah. The bigger flathead tend to be yanks, and the smaller ones tend to be sand flathead. All right. We'll chase more yank and blue spotted flathead on another day. For now, it's time to head inshore out of these choppy waters. Mate, what a great time we've had on Port Phillip Bay, my old stomping ground here, beautiful. It's been really good, Rob, and look, there's never been a better time to be a reef fisher in Victoria. 
Uh, we've stocked record numbers of fish. Port Phillip Bay is as healthy as it's ever been. Yeah. Snapper numbers, whiting numbers. Yeah. We've got a kingfish reef down there. There's tuna out the front, kingies. Yeah. Yeah. The netters are out. Oh. It's, you know, there's a big long, boat ramps are free. Yeah. Uh, and the Better Boating Fund, like there's millions of dollars a year upgrading boat ramps left, right and centre, including right around the bay. Yeah, the Victorian Fisher Authority definitely doing an absolutely awesome job. I can attest to that myself. So thanks for your time. Cheers, mate.